one, we can put it other places. Guys, hi, um, my name is Kate and I've set up a group because I want the resources for human beings where there's a group of teachers and there's a group of parents that of children of all ages to come together so that we can figure out what this new version of the world and society might look like. And in doing that in the last 12 months, groups of us have got together. And what I love about teachers that have had to reinvent themselves, well, is one, the fact that some of them are brave enough to reinvent themselves and start a new career and that I've been able to meet some of them. But I'm also, I'm doing this interview today because I want to get as many of them together as possible and promote as many of their things that they're creating as possible because that's going to help us into this new version of education and what does that potentially look like? And I think we're at the, on the precipice of a lot of people transitioning over. And today I have Jeff with me, who's a teacher who's created a few new things and I'm gonna get him to tell us about those things, that thing in as many details, as much detail as possible. And take it away, Jeff. Can you give us a brief overview of who you are and what you're doing? I can. Thanks, Kate. And thanks for your time. I appreciate this. Um, so people who don't know my background, I've been teaching about 25 years now. And my area of expertise has been student development, well-being, uh, outdoor education. And really, I see myself as a facilitator as opposed to a teacher. And through many, many years of being in the education system and mainstream, I've worked in um, government. Catholic and also independent, worked overseas and worked here in Australia. I've just seen different platforms, different models, but what I haven't seen um, consistently, and for me, I haven't seen enough, are inspired um, students who really, I believe, uh, are equipped for the dynamics, the craziness of the world that we live in. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, the last two years, I think a lot of us have seen that with um, the uh, current situation in the world and where we've all been sort of shown areas where we may be not as in control as what we thought we were, um, restraints that have become very problematic and really this big sort of shift towards sovereignty and independence. And with what I try to do with students every day is about teaching them about how to be independent, resilient, confident, you know, rounded, critical thinkers. And um, you know, I'm sure there's lots of institutions out there and schools out there, and I know there's amazing teachers out there who do try to inspire and do try to have them to be critical thinkers. But I personally, for me, I see that there's so many uh, restraints, um, restrictions, controls that we all work within. So some of these amazing teachers uh, are restrained. So the big thing that seems to be coming up from the back of all this and talking to lots of people is trying to create a new educational system. And I guess the homeschooling world have been doing this for many, many years. You know, they are independent, they are sovereign, they do look at the look outside the box, and uh, and they've been doing an amazing job for many, many years, providing their own um, children incredible learning experiences. And you know, I take my hat off to them. Um, and bravely enough, haven't been able to sort of really do that myself, and haven't been trapped in the matrix in a sense. And uh, but what's inspired me now through talking to people. Um, trying to find out a new, a new, a new way to move forward, is there's a group of us talking about trying to offer. And I don't want to use the word school, but trying to offer a new learning potential and a new learning, a place of learning. So coming back to what we all, I guess, value, being community, a gathering place, a gathering space. And I know there's a lot of teachers out there who currently have invent, reinvented themselves, are tutoring, uh, are putting some amazing programs together that are half a day or a full day. Um, and there's also some amazing new school programs and education programs popping up that are about well-being, holistic, nurturing, caring. But when I read more into them, some of them are also still dealing with mainstream government parameters. They're still doing the Australian curriculum or they're still doing um, the VCE. Uh, so even though they're still tapping now into a bit of critical thinking or well-being as, a, as an emphasis, they're still within that government control or that government restriction. So there's about three of us chatting at the moment about wanting to offer society, our communities, something completely different, something that goes back to education being organic. And this is what the homeschoolers have already been doing for years. So I'm really 
want to honour their space. Um, and I guess what I'm really presenting today is to those people out there who are, are new to this and are unsure and would like some guidance with this. Um, different to homeschooling where they tend to be on their own a little bit with siblings or with parents, um, what we want to provide is a space that people can come to that allows the parent to still be involved at whatever level they want, but allows the parent to also have their life and their own um, drive, their own sovereignty in the sense of they're working on their own work projects. They can then hand their children over in a sense for, so for us to then guide their, their learning space. And it is very unschooled in a sense. So our focus with this is about providing a place where students can come and connect with nature. They can come and connect with their own creativity. They can work within their own community. They can work within their own passions, which I'll talk a little bit about in a moment. Um, but the idea of that is to still have this gathering space where students come together so that their well-being is being looked after. They've got that social aspect of it. Um, and yeah, together they, they, they then learn. So it's not following any government um, rules or any government education. Um, it is organic and it's really just about learning and letting the student guide that learning and having that engagement, having that uh, agency and that sovereignty over their education. Um, but there is parameters obviously within that. So really trying to talk about it, we're trying to offer a model that's going to bring forth confident, um, critical thinkers, leaders, people who can um, critically analyze what's going on around them, have the skill set to then support each other, but bringing it back to, which I'm seeing massive movements with at the moment, just phenomenal, coming back to community. Um, you know, if I want to be very critical of our government and control, I think they've done very well in trying to separate us, segregate us, move us away, um, put us in fear. But what's been amazing is those people who are awakening to all this are reconnecting back to community. And, and that's what we want to do with this, this learning space. And I keep, I'm saying learning space at the moment because we're still trying to really work in what to call it because we don't want to use the word, I don't want to use the word school, I don't want to use the word teacher. Um, I mean, it is education, but really it's not even education, it's learning. It's about learning about self, about others and how to navigate an unknown world we're moving into, um, especially if the narrative does sort of come out and, um, and hopefully the government and all the, the evil in the world gets found out, then we've got a chance here to recreate. And even if we don't, even if it doesn't happen, I should say, we've got a chance to recreate a world that we believe is what needs to move forward with. So in looking at that, what we're trying to do with this learning, um, learning space is connect students back to nature. So the idea of the program is to have them out in nature. And again, it's driven by them. So if they collectively are wanting to go for a surf, um, or mountain biking, or horse riding, or walking, or riding um, a trail rider, or just walking through nature, being in nature, permaculture, horticulture, just exploring and being reconnected back to nature. So the benefits being there about them back to their normal rhythm, their normal cycles, um, going at a slower pace. I mean, even today talking to people going, oh, where's the week gone? It was, a, it was a short week, but it's gone so quick. Getting back to normal rhythms, normal cycles, and then that de-stressing. Yeah, the intention there is about them learning about themselves and others, but using nature as that vehicle for that. So a lot of this will be spending time in nature. And I know a lot of people are already setting these programs up, but not leaving it there. So then after they've been in nature, the idea is then to come back to a central base. And we've got a couple of places in mind at the moment that we're looking at. Um, we're just waiting for, I guess, some confirmation and some people and some other things going on that we can then offer this, this, this space. And this and is on the surf coast. Sorry to interrupt. This is on the you surf know. coast for anyone that might see this video that's not on the surf coast. Is that correct, Jeff? Yeah, would you be looking at is. would you be looking at setting it up anywhere else? Or could you help people set this up in other states, yes. for example? And I'll take yeah, it no, off track. Sorry. That's exactly no, that's fine. No, you haven't. Um, yeah, the I'll come back to that one. So the idea is definitely to do that. The idea is to find uh, we've, we've got a model in mind. We're still exploring the model and um before I guess fully launching it. Um, and part of this is about you know, showing people out there what we're looking to do. But the model we want to do is keeping it quite small. And I'm actually open, I know uh, on the post we said about possibly senior kids, because there's probably not a lot for the, the senior kids. That was my um, other question was age. Does Is this a yeah. specific age you're targeting? I, I've worked, I work prep to 12. So personally, my involvement can be prep to 12 and I can hold that space and that development for that age group. But 
there is a lot more out uh, there's not as much out there for the older kids so i guess that's a bit of a target audience because there's probably a, a lacking there for them to have that that's um that guidance with their learning um however i'm very flexible and we and the three of the people i'm talking about are very flexible with this you know we've talked about maybe grade six upwards but at the same time if people looked at this model and went wow okay this would still it will work for junior school um for, for the younger children then in asking the question, yes, the idea will be we want to keep numbers quite low. We believe, like, you know, education should or learning should always be in a smaller number at more, you know, one to eight, one to ten is sort of good numbers. So if the numbers got more than that, we'd bring more teachers in and we'd use their expertise and skill set. But the idea also then is to put, um, once we've got a model that we feel has good flow and it's working for the people and it gives back to the community, which is the, the, the premise of the whole system, is that that model can then be picked up and, and then shared around. And the idea will be, and we, we, and we are continuing to explore, we've almost found one also up in um, the Melton sort of region around Bacchus Marsh area as well, is when people realise that this works and this is actually an amazing learning space, that they are happy to then provide a building or a location, then the idea of us, the idea of this whole program is to then spread this far and wide. Um, and not to grow the size of schools, but keeping it back to that small tribal community minded um, focus. Uh, I think you know, schools are always sort of about growing. It's all about money. So it's an, it's an economic sort of wheel that turns around. So this is not about that. This is about the, the, the human growth, the student growth. And that happens in smaller group numbers. So hopefully that's answered the question. So yes, definitely picking it up and moving it around. Yes, definitely can support people with that. And the big thing at the moment is just simply finding location. So I guess putting it out there to the ethos into the world. Um, you know, I'm aware of one in, in the surf coast around the Belbray area. I've got one, as I said, that we're looking at around the, the Melton, Bacchus Marsh area. And I know of some really amazing groups down around the Otways area as well. So we're looking to explore um, those potential locations and offer this down there as well. And I guess trying to bring people into this as well because as I said there's people out there doing some amazing things in isolation or in solo and that may serve their journey at the moment which is amazing and and the power to them but this is also we're wanting to try and really help I guess the big dream is in the short term we're wanting to try and help people out there who are just not quite sure parents and students who are not quite sure and and give them this and provide them this space to grow and learn but then the idea is once when we know this model is going to be successful once it's successful, then we're going, we're going for everyone. You know, we want to turn education on its head and we want to get people to become awakened and we want people to realise that academia is one thing, but, you know, understanding yourself and having that well-being is more important. You know, I've seen far too many highly successful, well-educated people who are either alcoholics or they're abusing people or they're aggressive or they just they don't have the balance. And I've seen far too many students get to year 12 and trying to do their ATAR and they're stressed off their head and they literally drop out and they burn out and the pressure and then the ranking and then the pressure of getting the university course, the pressure of do I have to do this job? I've got to go and do this. Yeah, we've lost sight of our soul and our, and our connection to, I guess, ourself. So it's bringing it back to that more basic premise of why we're here and helping people find their purpose and find their why for life find their passion, reconnect with passion. Um, so the model and the focus, or, or I guess all the learning intentions besides that connect to nature, again, it's connecting to their creativity. So letting people explore their creative side, which again is all about well-being. So this is a mess. I mean, if you want to put this learning hub down to anything, it's a well-being school. It's a school of well-being. It's a school of just being well and being present and being connected to self-community. Um, you know, so if someone's into art or music or photography, dance, they get to do this during the day. It connects to whether they are already doing it with a club or a um, or a program that they bring that back into the, into their learning. So we can unpack that. We can explore the emotional literacy around it. We can explore a deeper meaning meaning to it. So we bring a lot of wellness and well and mindfulness into it, which is again, I guess, another focus point, which is connecting to self. So. Um, you know, that connect yourself is a chance for them to be reflective and to be still. So if you're in the water and you're sitting on a surfboard and you're watching the waves and you're just watching the day pass or the morning pass by, but we're out there talking about life, 
We're talking about sh the shared experience. And again, stopping, having that stillness, having that time to reflect, which we don't get in our busy world and we don't get at school when the kids are waking up at 6 a.m. to get on a bus, by, you know, to get door by 6.30, to get on a bus, to travel for some of us, travel 45 an hour on a bus. You know, imagine your child waking up at a reasonable hour, getting to the learning centre around nine in the morning. Their first activity is either walking in nature or surfing or mountain biking. They're smiling, they're filled with joy, they're at a slow pace, a relaxed pace. They come back to the, to the learning centre, if you want to call it that. And then they're, they're expressing themselves through creativity, um, sharing a meal, you know, they're working on their now next sort of learning focus, which is connecting to community. So the connect to community is about working with conservation groups. So my phone's falling in, working with is conservation that, groups. Is that what you mean when you when you said that this is about giving back to community? You mentioned. Yeah, yeah. There's two parts to this one we've got in mind. So people go, oh yeah, be a global citizen, be look at um, global politics, and that's all great because we need to be looking at the collective conscious that goes globally. However, we've got to look, I guess, within our own home first then our immediate circle and that ripple, that, that stone in the pond ripple effect, but our community, bringing our communities back together, which is coming out now. We've seen it up north in the northern, in the northern rivers. We've seen that um, around the surf coast with some amazing groups doing some amazing community work. And the idea is then the students, during their, during their learning, they, and we help guide them with this, we help facilitate this. We, we, we connect them with conservation groups, different markets, refugee communities, homeless groups, um, but different organisations. So they're giving back to the local community, but they can also work on a project which I've seen successfully ran before and, and been involved in, where they actually identify something within their literal local community that needs to be addressed, a concern or an issue or a problem, or uh, I won't say a problem, I don't want to use that word, but they find a tangible project to work on. They then work on strategies to implement, to feed back to the community, and then they put that in, they talk to the right people, they network, they resource, and then they put action into place. And that's the key. So it's not just about learning, it's about applying. And too many times here in a mainstream school, we learn, we learn, we learn. Now we get knowledge, we get knowledge, but we don't get, so we actually get knowledge, sorry, but we don't get to learn because we don't get to apply it in a practical mm. setting. So giving back to the community is about that project and helping their local community, whether it's water tanks or solar or, or whatever needs to be done within their, their local community. Can I just um, add something for the people that are crossing over, which are so many of us at the moment, you know, that haven't been exposed to homeschooling, that the pathway to university is not just through whatever the end of high school year certificate is either. There are also gazillions of ways apparently and people that have been homeschooling for a while already know this apparently but I just want parents that are you know have very scholastic other halves or that's that's how life is supposed to be that they still can get whatever templated plan you had um you know maybe or maybe not planned for them, but they can still go to university if they choose to do that and often before their counterparts that finish that stressful yeah, um, well, that's sense. a great segue into one of our other learning intentions, which is connect to passion. And so one of the people I'm speaking with, he's a bit of an entrepreneur and he's worked with students overseas in Kenya, um, Indonesia, here in Australia. And we really want to tap into the child's passion and the learning is about their passion. So forget about, you know, Macbeth, forget about, you know, literature in that sort of context. The literature and the learning, the English and the maths and the science, mm. if it needs to be, will be about their passion areas. If they're into fashion design, their history will be learning the research on that, the history or the business side of it all. They'll be learning about writing poems related to that. So they write and learn in a capacity that's about their, their passion. Mm. But this friend of mine who is an ex-teacher, um, who I was just talking about, so part of this program is to create entrepreneurs. And he's had great success with getting students at 13 years old writing novels and publishing novels. He's got a young boy at the moment. He loves his Bitcoin. And at 16 years old, this kid is trading, trading successfully Bitcoin. And so he's connecting into that. So part of his research and his history is going back into it. So he's learning about his trade. And what our aim with the whole connected passion is what you just said, Kate, we don't Want, we, uh, we actually believe that we will fail people if they, after grade, uh, sorry, after 16 years old, traditional year 10, mm. they want to go back to VCE. We failed them. 
because all the highly successful people in the world, most of them have not actually even been to university. We've been sold a lie of VCE, ATAR, university, and then by about mid-20, go and find your career. The statistics are so high of so many people who fall out of uni, don't get their first career, uh, sorry, don't work in the career choice of their uni um, degree, mm. go to the university for year one and go, hang on, this is not for me, and they want to then dive, um, transfer or so forth. They have the stress of trying to get into university. You know, this open university for those people. At 16 years old, you can be doing an online university course in engineering, in teaching, in anything. Uh, at 13 years old, there's a couple of courses in Australia for a 13-year-old to do open university. So now 13-year-old, there's wow. a bit of a cost for that as well, but there's a cost to go to uni. So about 16, year old, 16 I think, is a great age to be doing online university um, courses while you're working with us, well, you've already been working with us in terms of exploring entrepreneurialism. So it's really just meant to complement what it is your passion is. For us, it's about 18 years old. You're set up with your own business. You're sovereign. You're not dependent on the government for money. And if, you know, and if we, we can get people to be independent and sovereign, you know, um, which is the whole idea of Bitcoin and, and taking away the capacity for handouts. And if we're talking about the Great Reset, if it, you know, I hope the hell it never happens. But if this is going to happen, you know, they keep saying you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. You know, so we don't want that. You know, you want to have ownership of your life. You want to be in control of your life. So if the pension drops or if things happen, well, you're in control of your money. And to do that really is about you being in control of your business world, your livelihood, your money earnings, and then being smart about that. So that's that's really what that connected passion is. And part of that also is, you know, linking and setting people up. And a lot of homeschoolers are doing this already. It's the unschooling. It's, mm. the, it's the child going to work in that industry. You know, there's a great story of a young, young child who wanted to be a chef. The parents set him up beautifully, got him the connection. He started doing his... Um, working in a restaurant, I think it was a restaurant, but he started working in that industry. And after six months, he realised, oh, my God, this is crazy work, hard hours, really. It wasn't the glorified dream he thought it was, but by having that experience, he realised, hang on, that's actually not for me. So maybe I can use my talents somewhere else, where most people come out after a trade course or after TAFE or university and they realise, oh, hang on, now I don't know what I want to do because I don't know what it is I want to do. I thought I wanted to do that. So again, the whole idea of this, this learning experience by being with us is that by the time they are 16 or whatever age they need to be, they've got a really good handle on who they are, what their strengths are, what their passions are, and they've got a, they've got a pathway and a guidance to go there. They know, as I said, they know their why. And they've got this, hopefully, this is the dream, they understand their sole purpose for why they're here. And even if, can I add to that, having worked for myself for almost forever of my adult life is that I still haven't decided what I want to do when I grow up and that I couldn't do it out of a very prestigious high school still couldn't decide um, it didn't feel right to go on to whatever I was supposed to be doing and so I didn't but the ability to change and the confidence to try something new can I say is all that I want for example for my teenager just to try something new if that doesn't work, it doesn't matter. Try something new. Yeah. I don't. I don't think everyone's built to be to become an entrepreneur. Anyway, we still need people to move this from the, from there to there to support the <laughs> entrepreneurs, so to speak. I think we're dealing with a yeah with a big situation of of needing to change. This is a definite definitely needed. When can we start? Where do we sign up, Jeff? <laughs> Now, no. Um, yeah, so where, next week. Where, where we are with this, our, our dream, our idea would be we can start this term too. Um, you know, for people who don't know my background, I'm still out of school. And um, and so I've, you know, and I've got some friends who are who are out, out of the school system. So our dream would be to get this place secure. People can can contact us. They can, I mean, I'll... Um, Somehow we'll give them my email address and they can mm -hmm. get in contact if they really need to do, to, um, if they really want to have a conversation more about this. Mm -hmm. You know, we're still trying to work out different ways that people can, I don't want to use that word, but to buy into it because we need to obviously um, pay for the venue at the moment. We need to pay for some of the activities. Um, and we need to pay for 
people's time, like myself and the other teacher who, who is going to be involved in this. And so we're still working out some. Oh, Jeff, Jeff. It's just gone crazy. One second, we just lost you there. Yeah, sorry, my phone just froze in. Um, so, but the, the idea is this, if I, I know, I, around the start of term two would be when we would like to get it up and running. That would be the dream to get up and running around then, which is about, what are we, four, I think four or five weeks away. Um, you know, expression of interest now would be phenomenal. If there was a lot of people out there who just said, yep, this sounds amazing. I want to know more. I'm happy to talk to any, anyone one-to-one, probably. Um, um, we're trying to do a talk, which we've already put a post up. We're trying to do a talk in Belbray uh, at one of the properties um, in April, at the start of April. So even though that's sort of moving close into the end of this term, uh, people are welcome to come to that as well. And as I said, people are welcome to, to definitely contact me. But um, look, I guess my mind's just gone on a second, but the big thing with all of this, it's about holding space for the child so they can really grow, be nurtured, understand who they are. Yeah. And um, and there was an arranging, you know. So again, imagine a school where there's no need for assessments. That's just to grade people. That's to get them ready for ATAR score. It's grades people. You know that beautiful bell-shaped curve that gets someone into university is not a reflection of the person's ability, skill, or capability. So, and as and as you just said, which was great. Yeah, you know, there's other pathways to get to your end dream. There's other pathways to get to your potential, your work potential, your career, your livelihood, your income. If, so, if you want to go to university. If, oh, like that's a, yeah. I think it just gets to be a big if. It's not the only thing. And if anything, this whole reset's taught us, it's that we have to reset ourselves. It's either yeah. respond to that, respond and react to what's being reset for you. Choose your reset, really. That's correct. Yeah. Look, and you're right. I mean, there's no, we're not saying, definitely not saying to people, you can't go off and do year 11, 12 VCE. You shouldn't go to university. You shouldn't go to TAPE. You know, my son at the moment is doing um, a Cert two course in engineering. Um, it's about showing them multiple possible pathways that can get them to their passion, which again, I think some schools aren't as good at doing that with career counselling and so forth. And showing them at an earlier age as well, you know, that, yeah. Here is a full potential and the world's your oyster in a sense. You know, go and go and seize the day, go and grab it. Um, but the big thing about this program will be that fa failure is awesome. Mistakes are great because that's how we learn. You know, I see a lot of people, even adults, who are unwilling to try of fear of failure, of fear of being judged or thought poorly of. But we only learn through having a mistake. And that's why I love the word mistake. It's not a mistake as a negative. It's a mistake as a positive. It's a mistake. You just didn't get it right. Have yeah. another crack at it. Where if we had more young people willing to try, willing to do, how much more of a positive society we would live in. People to get their hands dirty, roll their sleeves up, get in, own their baggage, own their, part of my words, but own their shit. Um, and be more emotionally secure and able to reflect mm. and therefore the leaders, the world leaders, you know, and not be pretentious and full of it, understand effect on other people um, and be willing to protect those around you and help your community. That's what we're dreaming. I keep it dreaming. It can, to be honest, I don't know if you've, well, you probably have thought about the impact of this long term because this is, you're at the precipice and the beginning of something that's going to grow into that's a new revolution, really, isn't it? Yeah. It yeah. Is and as I said, there's some schools out there who are doing this and they do it, but I still feel there's lots of restraints around it. And I've seen and I've worked in far too many schools that they would talk a talk, but they don't walk it. They say they've got a wellbeing program. They say they have this program, but I don't see it every day. You know, there's, yeah, so that's, that's, where we're, that's where we're at. So, look, moving forward for this, it's really about if anyone wants to know more and if anyone is excited the same as we're excited by it, then I'd love to hear from them. Um, we're still working on getting this right, and we know it's going to be very organic. You know, We know we're going to start with just a handful of people, which is great. We're going to keep the numbers very limited anyway, 
And if there is uh, an overwhelming expression of interest, we'll be creative in how we can establish that. People might only want to come and tap in for a date. They might want to come and do two, two or three days. Um, you know, our idea at the moment is starting around nine o'clock and finishing by about two o'clock. You know, we're not a, it won't be a normal day thing. It depends on the day too. Um, we'll guide the students if Wednesday afternoon is better for them to go and do their community project or um, or their um, work, well, call it work experience or whatever it is they're doing, then it's very fluid. It's very much driven by the students. So um, it's not, it's just not this one model fits all. It's really gonna be about the child driving it and steering it and us holding space for them. But a lot of the nature-based activity, the mindfulness, the wellbeing, that will be us then, you know, coming together and, and, and providing that for them, which will then help flourish them in their other areas. Um, yeah, and then hopefully we can start this in about term, term two. It sounds exciting. What's your email address, Jeff, if someone wants um, to get I'll, in contact? Yeah, I know so we'll, we'll definitely write it in the text, but I'll yeah. well say it. So it's, it's basically my full name. So it's Jeff Rennes, and it's good thing is my, our names appear on the screen here right now. So it's J E W F R I E N I A T S, and it's at protonmail.com. Yeah. So my full name, no spaces or dots, at protonmail.com. And then, as I said, very happy to explore this more with families and also happy to receive any um, thoughts and feedback, I guess. You know, if there's anybody out there who's gone, look, I've been thinking about this as well, love to be involved, or parents out there or children going, this sounds what my child needs. Um, have you thought about this or that? Then, you know, this is, I see this as a community project as well, a collective conscious project. This is about giving back to, to us. Um, and it's not meant to be controlled by anyone or anything. It's meant to be all of us involved, a bit like the homeschooling system, but it's just got a few more helpful guidance, I guess, for those people who can't do it on their own. So we're here to help. That's an amazing idea. I, I'm very much wishing it was around 10 years ago, but anyway, it wasn't, wasn't meant to be. It was meant to be now. So I'm sure everybody who wants to get involved can definitely contact you, should contact you and... I know you'll be open to as many conversations as possible about it. Let's get the teenagers there. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Um, will you do actually, will you do any after school times, do you think? I'm not going to say no to anything. It's got to be, it's got to suit the people. Yeah. So that would be something we would definitely explore. It's something we haven't thought about, to be honest, but we have definitely thought about um, it's got to be right for the people. So yeah. I'll talk to you about that later. Yeah, I'll talk to you about that later then. I was just thinking for a trial for kids that are already in school because you know how it is when they start getting mm. their own opinions and they've got to want to go. So Yeah, definitely. Mm. Well, I guess on that as well, though, um, good old Aussie Siki, that's always a great thing to do. Oh, yes. So, yeah, and, and I mean yeah. that with total respect because <laughs> it's yeah, the mental health day, a well-being day, so a day staying at home, well, a day coming to do our program for a day to trial it. Definitely, yeah. And that's one of the things we're probably thinking of in the early stages, we may offer a free day or a free trial because it's got to feel right, it's got to be right. So that was part of our game plan from the beginning, um, us offering it for free for that first bit if people are unsure. And then, yeah, and looking at different sort of packages as well and trying to make it that it can be for everyone. So it's not for, um, so it does, it does hit everyone's, I guess, availability and budget restraints and all that, all those sort of, aspects it's very exciting i'll make sure this video goes into as many places as possible and i will type jeff's address just in case you're i don't know listening to it on a podcast episode or something as well because there's an audio so i might send it out there too um, thank you so much for your time jeff i know this will be installment one of probably many and feel free to tag jeff in that group the homeschooling group if that's where you're seeing this and we'll get in touch soon. Right. Thank you for your time, Kate. You're welcome.